In the next one hour, we'll go into the word of God and trust the Lord to bring us illumination and empowerment. Hallelujah. I want to share with us on the topic, a theme for this morning is um, enlarging your capacity for dominion. I believe this is a very sensitive topic and I'm trusting the Lord for the inspiration to bring us God's counsel that will not only inspire and educate but empower for dominion indeed. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you precious Lord. We give you all the glory in Jesus precious name. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to verse 28 will be my anchor scripture this morning. God had created the world and somehow in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 after the Lord created the world the Bible said and the earth was without form and darkness was upon the face of the deep and we saw that God returned to recreate the world that was destroyed this morning is not my job to bring us understanding on what happened but God came back to recreate the world and after recreating the face of the earth in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we saw that the community of the Godhead the council of the Godhead sat back and they began a deliberation to create a new governor that will rule over the earth realm and the Bible said God said let us make man in our own image and in our likeness and he said in the image of God he made man and he said male and female he made them both and he went further in verse 28 he said and the Lord blessed them and the Lord said be fruitful multiply replenish subdue and have dominion and so we saw from that scripture that God's plan was for man to have dominion on the face of the earth and so our existence will count for nothing except as we bring God's government to the face of the earth be fruitful multiply replenish subdue have dominion now when you study the book of Genesis chapter 1 chapter 2 and chapter 3 there are two things you will find about dominion the first thing you will find about dominion is the capacity requirement for dominion and then the protocol of dominion what we have in Genesis 1 28 is the protocol the administrative protocol for dominion fruitfulness replenishing subduing multiplying those are administrative procedure and that will not be our emphasis this morning from our team this morning our emphasis is about the capacity building requirement for dominion the organic aspect of dominion if your capacity is not built you will not have what it takes to bring the administrative requirement for dominion and so when you study the book of Genesis you are going to find five things that God gave to man as an organic intrinsic requirement capacity requirement for dominion and when the devil came to attack man these were the five things he took from man because if these things are in you dominion will be a byproduct and as you study that scripture you will find out that God deliberately placed these things 
because he knew that man of necessity must have them if dominion will be in view and so we pick them out quickly we show you how man lost it and then we show you what christ did in order to restore man to it and then dominion will become natural in genesis 1 26 where we, where we began to read from the bible said god speaking now let us make man in our own image and so the first intrinsic organic reality that god put in man as a tool of dominion was his image anybody who will exercise dominion on the face of the earth must bear the image of god let us make man in our own image the second thing god gave man as a tool of dominion is in that same scripture and in our likeness that is god's righteous character anybody who wants to exercise dominion must of necessity exhibit god's righteous character and then number three you are going to find another thing god made available to man that is in genesis chapter 3 verse 8 the bible said in the cool of the day it said the voice of god came walking in the garden the voice of god was not spoken to the man the voice of god came walking in the garden so this was not primarily about communication this was actually about intimacy and fellowship because god was not talking to the man the voice of god came walking in the garden so god actually brought his presence into the abode of the man eden naturally is the habitat of god's presence but in addition to that god brought his presence into the man so when the voice of god came walking in the man god came to have intercourse and intimacy with the man so the thought thing the man had that produced or provided the basis for dominion was intimacy with god and then number four we saw in genesis chapter 2 verse 9 the bible said god planted trees in the garden and he said there were all manner of good trees there and he said in the midst of the garden god also planted the tree of life so the third thing god made available for dominion was his life if you study man carefully you are going to discover that man has three kinds of life there is the life that is in his blood leviticus 17 verse 11 says the life of the flesh is in the blood and then in genesis 2 7 we saw that when god formed the man from the dust he blew into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living soul so there is another life in the soul of the man but there was a life god wanted the man to have which would be in his spirit and that life is the life god planted in the midst of the garden because man is a body a soul and a spirit and so there are three definite lives that will power him when you cut off a man's hand the hand will still be shaken because there is life in the blood the natural life is sustained by the blood this is why you need to eat food every day in order to live in this realm if you don't eat for 21 days your life the life of the blood can depart the flesh will die because there is a life that sustains the blood that life is called bios that's the animal life even the dog has that life but there is also a life in the soul that gives you the capacity to think cognitively that life is called suke that's what forms your psychology but the realm of interaction that god wanted to have with man is superior to just body and soul god wants to interact with man at spirit level so he created another life called zoe for the spirit of the man he hid that life in the midst of the garden for the man to take so that he will have dominion but unfortunately the man didn't take it 
It is when man is in position, possession of God's nature, God's righteous character, God's presence, and God's life that man can now have dominion. Because let them have dominion is a commandment. It's a declaration. So there is a declaration that God gave to the human race that makes man an entity of dominion. This is why every man wants power. Every man wants authority. Because God spoke it into the DNA of man. When he created man, he said, let them have dominion. So the five organic things that makes for dominion is number one, God's nature, which is his essence or his glory. Number two, God's righteous character. Number three, God's presence. Number four, God's life. And number five, the law of the Lord that is in the soul of the man. If you lack these five things, no matter what you do, you cannot exercise dominion. And the devil knew it. So when the devil came for man, he didn't go for the activity. God had told the man, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. The devil knows those administrative protocols will not count if it damages the intrinsic reality. So what the devil did was to go for the innate aspect of the man, not the activity of the man. And he came to defy the man. And he knew what to do to defy the man. So when the serpent came into the garden, he began to argue and present a proposition to the man. Did God say? Why did they ask him if God told them to have dominion or not? He was dealing with what had to do with the inner man. Did God say, you should not eat of any, every tree in the garden? And the woman innocently, in her naivety said, of all the trees in the garden we can eat, but the tree that is in the midst of the garden, we, will, we should not eat or touch. God didn't even say not to touch. But the woman was speaking what she felt Adam had communicated to her. Meanwhile, the question you ask, if you know there is a tree in the midst of the garden that you should not eat, why didn't you eat the tree of life that is also in the midst of the garden? Because they didn't understand what dominion was about. They were rather going into the garden with a lot of activities, doing everything but the things that should have completed the cycle of dominion. They never went for it. And the devil told them, that is not true. He said, for God knows that in the day you eat of that tree, you will become like God. So the argument was not about activity. It was about essence. It was about capacity. It was about organic reality. If I defile you, anything you do will not work. So instead of going for what you do, let me go for your nature. Let me go for your essence. Because that's where dominion is trapped. And foolishly, the man and the woman took of that tree and ate it and death entered them. The nature of God was affected. And eventually, God drove them out of the garden. So when the Bible began to teach us in the New Testament, the first thing Paul told us in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 is that, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God because we were operating at the level of the glory of God when we carried God, God's nature for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God so nature had been removed and then Jesus came and was speaking to them in Matthew John chapter 8 verse 44 he said you are of your father the devil and the lost of your father shall you do he didn't say you are from your father. He said you are of your father. That means you now have the nature of the devil, not the nature of God anymore. And because you have the nature of the devil, he said it is the lost of your father you shall do. So you no longer possess the likeness of God. You no longer sustain the righteous character of God. You have adopted the character of the devil. So man had lost nature. Man has also lost character. And we also saw from Genesis chapter 3 that when God came to the garden and sought them and they hid themselves, God asked them, have you eaten of the fruit that I told you not to eat? They said, it is the devil. They were trying to shift blame. But that was not God's problem. You no longer have my nature. You no longer have my character. So you can no longer be in my presence. So the man was driven from the garden. So he had also lost the presence of God. And unfortunately, he didn't eat a tree of life.
So God said, in this denatured state, he cannot eat the tree of life. So he also did not have the tree of life. Because he has lost nature, lost character, lost presence, and did not have access to the tree of life, there was no way the commandment of dominion could work on his life. Immediately, the man was deranked. He became a servant of the devil. And the devil immediately became the god of this world. So dominion largely has to do with your essence and your capacity. The reason we will study about this this morning is so that you know what to focus on in order to walk in dominion. The moment you lose nature, lose righteous character, lose presence, and you don't have the life of God, there is no way you will exercise dominion. If you like studying Harvard, if you like studying Oxford, dominion is not a product of the external first. It's a product of the internal makeup. Who are you? What do you carry? What is your capacity in God? That is what will empower you to exercise dominion. Until this day, that's what the devil is fighting in the life of the believer. The devil will allow you to go to the best university in the world, but he will not allow you to keep your purity. The devil will allow you to have the best position in the world, but he will not allow you to keep your purity because he knows that if your internal essence is defied, you can't bring God's government. You can have a position, but you cannot bring God's government. You can have money, but you cannot bring God's government. So every external capacity is irrelevant, except as the internal capacity is corrected. So as we are dealing with the subject of dominion this morning, our focus will be on how to realign our internal essence so that our external essence can count. Listen, brothers and sisters, I am not in any way talking against the external things that we can have, like certification, like money and all of that. I have studied myself. I hold a PhD in physical chemistry. So I'm not talking about education. I'm not talking about money. But I'm telling you that if you first of all don't become like God, you cannot exercise dominion regardless of what you possess. Are you following me this morning? If you are following me, let me hear a loud hallelujah. Praise God. And so, now that the man is falling, how can he come back to dominion? Because the unfortunate thing is that the fallen man cannot help himself. Jesus came and began to give us an understanding of the real estimation of a man outside God. And in John chapter 6 verse 63, he said, it is the spirit that quickens. He said, the flesh profited nothing so what jesus was telling us is that the godhead have studied the state of the fallen man and the conclusion they came out of you know there is a studio where god enters when he wants to deal with the issue of creation that was the studio he entered in genesis 1 26 when he said let us make man no angel goes there only god sits there that's when god that's where god studies creation that's where god passes laws from nobody approaches him there it was in that same studio of all knowledge all power that god sat and when he estimated man he said kai the flesh profited nothing so any man who does not have god regardless of what he has he has already been judged from the realm of god that the flesh profited nothing so the first calamity of the fallen man is that as far as divine agenda is concerned he is useless his intelligence is useless. His money is useless. His position is useless. Because it is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profited nothing. The second calamity of the fallen man is that when he fell, another took the position. When the devil was tempting Jesus on the mount of temptation in Matthew chapter 4, he said, bow down to me. I will give you the earth and all the glories. He said, for it has been delivered unto me. Jesus didn't argue. And Paul came back in 2 Corinthians 4.3. He said, the devil is the God of this world. So when man fell, the position was not vacant. Another prince ascended that position to rule over the earth. So the second calamity of man is that a tyrannical prince is now exercising governance on the face of the earth. This is why the Bible teaching us 
in Galatians chapter 1 verse 4 he calls this age an evil age because the nature of the prince ruling the system will dominate the system he said this age is an evil age in Psalm 74 verse 20 he said have respect unto the covenant he said the dark places of the earth is filled with the habitation of cruelty in, in Isaiah 60 verse 2 he said the whole earth shall be covered with darkness why is it so because when man fell the position was not vacant another prince came and began to bring another government another prince came and began to bring another dominion why do you think the lion is a carnivorous animal it's because the foundation of the earth have shifted the lion was not designed to eat flesh it was designed to eat grass when the dominion of God is restored the lion will go back to his blueprint do you think the mosquito was created to transmit malaria no that's not his duty do you think grasses were designed to just grow anyhow even the earth is in bondage the Bible said the earth is in the bondage is suffering under the bondage of corruption so what man did did not only affect man it affected nature it affected everything because another prince has begun to rule over the earth but there is hope because the bible said the earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of god so the dominion of the devil will end when sons appear when sons begin to manifest they begin to push back the tides of darkness when sons begin to manifest they begin to push back the government of the devil the purpose of the emergence of sons is to stop the dominion of satan and if you look at the life of jesus everywhere he went to what he did was to stop the dominion of satan somebody is dead he said rise up and walk somebody is lame he said rise up and walk somebody is blind he said rise up and open your let your eyes open see somebody is deaf he said let your ears open because deafness blindness death poverty are all expression of the dominion of satan when sons appear their duty is to stop the dominion of satan and this is why this morning we are studying this subject so everybody will live here and become sons people who can stop the dominion of darkness until we arise as sons that will not be possible but you see you don't wake up and become sons there's a protocol for sonship before you can ever dream of becoming a son you must first of all be a child of god you will become a child of god before you become a son of god but you also don't just wake up and become a child of god because god knows that the only way the dominion of satan can stop and his dominion or his government can find the expression of the earth is for sons to emerge so he has been routed several paths in order to bring us to sonship he sent prophets prophets prophesied but it didn't work and so hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 said god who had sundry times and in diverse manners spake unto the fathers by the prophet has in this last day spoken to us by his son so the only cure god discovered was that his own son has to come to the earth so that he can make men become the sons of god and so when jesus came in order to bring us back to sonship there were three pathways jesus had to follow number one he had to be a savior number two he had to be a son and then number three he had to be a lord until you meet jesus the savior jesus the son and jesus the lord you can never have dominion because it's only on that basis that you and i too can come into sonship and so the journey of dominion is actually a journey of encounter encounter with jesus the savior encounter with jesus the son and encounter with jesus the lord by the time you encounter these three dimensions of jesus you will discover that your nature has been restored you will discover that your likeness has been restored you will discover that the presence of god has been restored you will discover that the life of god has been restored and you will also discover that the law that god spoke in genesis will be reiterated in your life so very quickly in the next 10 minutes let's look at the journey of jesus the savior jesus the son and jesus the lord isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 please bear in mind that i've already told you that 
the Bible said, outside of God, the flesh profits nothing. It said it's the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. Also bear in mind that there is a dark prince already dominating this earth. So what I'm talking about is the only way. You, you, can't, you can't route it through any other way. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He didn't say, I am a way. Outside of Jesus, you cannot route dominion. It's impossible. And for you to route dominion in Christ, you must know him as Savior. Because the first thing he wants to do is to deliver you from every bondage that you are under. That is why he's in, he was introduced as Savior. And so Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, he said, unto us a child is born. And he said, uh, no, he said, the Lord shall give you a sign. And he said, you a virgin shall give birth. And he said, you shall call him Emmanuel. And when the angel of the Lord came to deliver this same message in the time that was designated for Jesus to manifest, in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 to 23, he said, the angel told him, your wife Mary, who is a virgin, shall give birth to a child. And you shall call his name Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. And he went further to say that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Unto us a virgin shall give birth to a son. And you shall call his name Emmanuel. For God shall be with us. So anybody who wants an enlarged capacity for dominion must encounter Jesus the Savior. If you have not met Jesus the Savior, you will remain a bondage under the yoke of the devil. And so Jesus the Savior came to introduce you to the corridor of dominion. And when you encounter Jesus the Savior, there are five things he will deliver you from. The first thing Jesus will deliver you from is sin. Because sin is one of the weapons the devil used to keep us in bondage. That's why we cannot exercise dominion. That's why Paul speaking, he said that in Romans 6 14, he said, Sin shall no longer have dominion over you. Why is that so? Because first John 3 8 said, For this cause was the Son of Man made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So the first work Jesus destroyed was sin. When he destroyed sin, he took away one of the yoke that kept us in bondage. The second thing Jesus will deliver you from is from the power of Satan. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 12, he said, Giving thanks to the Father who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He said, Having delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in light. But how did he do it? He did it on the cross of Calvary. In Colossians 2 14, he said, Every handwriting of ordinance that was against us, he blotted it out and nailed it to the cross. And he went further to say, Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them triumphing over them by the cross so jesus had to destroy the devil for you to have liberty from the yoke of the devil and when he appeared after his resurrection he said all hail the king he said all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me you go in that power so it was when jesus defeated the devil that you too got victory from the power of the devil so no christian who has understanding should be under the yoke of the devil anymore because the savior made sure that the devil was defeated but jesus didn't stop there jesus also delivered us from the world because he knows that the force of this world the elements of this world are also tools that the devil uses to enslave the believer so in john 16 33 he said in this world you will have tribulation he said but be of good cheer i have overcome the world i have overcome the world now because he has overcome the world he injected his life into us so that we too might become overcomers and when john was teaching he said in first john chapter 5 verse 4 he said whoever is born of god overcome the world he said this is the victory that overcome the world even our faith so anybody who believes in jesus begins to enjoy victory over the elements of this world and jesus did not stop there he still went further to deliver us from the flesh 
in Galatians chapter 5 verse 24 it said whoever was nailed on the cross with Christ it said has crucified the flesh so when Jesus was nailed he crucified the flesh he crucified the flesh so Romans 13 14 said put on the Lord Jesus no longer give an occasion for the flesh to fulfill the loss thereof so Jesus also delivered us from the flesh five things he delivered us from from sin from the world from the power of Satan from the flesh and finally he delivered us from death in John chapter 11 verse 25 he said I am the resurrection and the life he said he that believeth in me shall not die and he said even if he were dead he shall live again and so for the Christian we already know our end when our assignment is over we don't die we translate to glory because we have overcome death we know exactly when we are going to we are not going to end in the lake of fire we are going to end in intimacy with God forever in the next because death has been overcome these were the five things that God made available to us in Christ the Savior it is on this premise that we can now stand up and say we will have dominion it's on this premise that we can now stand up and say we will take over our world because all the forces that had authority for governance over us have been disarmed sin has been disarmed the world has been disarmed flesh has been disarmed satan has been disarmed death has been disarmed and the only way we can walk into it is to receive the savior when we receive the savior we receive these five dimensions of victory but you see all of this economy was programmed into a, an infrastructure called eternal life so when jesus package deliverance from death package deliverance from satan package deliverance from the world package deliverance from sin package deliverance from death he incorporated it in a capsule called eternal life so anybody who received jesus eternal life is injected into him john 3 16 said for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life now when you receive eternal life you have the potential to overcome the world because victory over the world is there when you receive eternal life you have the potential to overcome the devil because victory over the devil is there when you receive eternal life you have the potential to overcome sin because victory over sin is there when you receive eternal life you have the potential to overcome the flesh when you receive eternal life you have the potential to overcome death but the question is how many christians truly are living as overcomers you know why because when you receive eternal life you are a child so your whole encounter with jesus the savior makes you a child of god it's a different thing entirely to become a son so many christians are at the level of children so god will still need to intervene to bring healing god will still need to intervene to cast out devils god will still need to intervene to break the force of flesh god will still need to intervene because they are children galatians chapter 4 verse 1 said the heir so long as he's a child is not different from a servant even though he's the lord of all so you may have all the potentials to walk in all the victory but you cannot walk in it because you are a child when you have encountered jesus the savior you need to encounter jesus the son it is in the face of jesus the son that you translate the potential of dominion into an experience but many never travel that far with jesus they only stop at the altar call and so all of the potentials are loaded in them but they are still walking like servant he said i've seen an abomination on the face of the earth that princes are trekking while beggars are riding on horses a generation must grow from being children of god to becoming sons of god because government does not belong to children government belongs to sons imagine if infants with pampas go on the street now and they start crying and shouting we no go agree we no go agree do you think the house of assembly will consider what they are saying they will say take them from the road quickly they will die they are children their number does not count children can be one million they are children children can be one billion they are children 
That's why the glory of the move of God in the last day is not number, it's stature. How, who is talking? The question is, it's not how many are talking, it's who is talking. Because children can be a million, it counts for nothing. You know the problem? Children are a consumer generation. When they gather, God give me food. When they gather, God give me healing. When they gather, God give me deliverance. And they don't know that he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness in Christ Jesus. But it is through the epignosis there is an intercourse that you need to enter in order to know that you don't need to beg for healing anymore. Healing is the children's bread. When you find anything wrong with your body, you go to your prayer closet because if that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body. So when a growth is coming, you enter your chambers. Kakakira, Barakada, Sudak, Bandoria, Baraka. After a while, you will discover you enter your ascended reality and you will cause the growth. The growth has no choice but to die because that is sonship sonship is when scepters are taken sonship is when governance is exercised so a generation must migrate from the revelation of Jesus the Savior into the revelation of Jesus the Son our number counts for nothing if all of us are children in fact when the devil comes and he sees that we are children he uses us as lab rats he sends cancer to one sends poverty to another sends frustration to another and hundred people gather all of them is begging god to help them but when sons arise he said when you see a mountain you will not talk to god no the power of heaven is on your inside he said you will say to this mountain be thou removed be thou cast into the sea and if you do not doubt in your heart the mountain will be removed so when you come to god you are not reporting to him about the mountain when you come to god you are gaining ascension into the realms of light you are finding out the secrets of God. You are finding out the mantles of the spirit. You are finding out dimensions in God. Because for you, mountains are no longer a challenge. That's where you manifest the glory of God. A generation of sons will emerge from here. What is the revelation of Jesus the son? I give you four of them very quickly. And if you want your capacity to be enlarged, this is what you will focus on. Because he didn't just become son to do the will of the father. He also became son so that he can bring all of us to sonship. And there are five revelations of sonship. Number one is the ability to image the father. It's a God who at sundry times. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. And in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Has in this last day spoken to us, not by his child by his son and what did he call the son who been the brightness of his glory the express image of his person it's on the strength of that imaging that dominion is imparted after he became the express image of his person he said upholding all things by the word of his power so if you cannot image god you cannot exercise dominion if you cannot image god you cannot be a government because the government shall be on the shoulder of the sons not the children but for you to be a son who can uphold all things, you must image God. So when Jesus walked the earth, he walked the earth revealing the Father. Philip came to him and said, show us the Father that we might know him. And he said, have you been with me all this while? And you know not the Father? He said, whoever have seen me, have seen the Father. Whoever have seen me, have seen the Father. I reveal the Father. I express the Father. I manifest the Father. That is what sonship is about. And so for anybody who wants an enlarged capacity for dominion, his goal should be to image the Father. And there is a technology for getting there. In Jeremiah 33 verse 3, he said, ask of me, I will answer. He said, but I don't only answer prayer. He said, when you start praying, I start showing. And the technology of transfiguration is that what you see is what you become. He said, what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us? that we might be called the sons of God. He said, it does not yet appear what we shall look like. He said, but when we shall see him, we shall be like him. So when you start praying, God answers your prayer, but he doesn't stop there. After he answers your prayer, he said, I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. So the corridor of prayer is the gateway to beholding him. Every time you pray, the realms open. And as the realms open, you don't only get answer. You start seeing the dimensions of the Christ. And any dimension you see is imparted into you. The, 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 the apostle John was speaking. He said, and I, John, was in the isle called Patmos on the day of the Lord. 
and I heard a sound as of a trumpet. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he said, as I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And as he saw it, he said, behold, I saw one walking in the midst of the lampstand. And Jesus began to reveal his dimension. He said, I am Alpha, I am Omega. I am the one who was, who is, and who is to come. I am the one who was dead, but liveth forevermore. He was revealing to him dimensions of Christ. But how did he see him? Because he was in the spirit on the last day. The reason we tell a generation to pray is not because of bread and wine. That's the lowest requirement of prayer. When you begin to pray, your eyes open. When you begin to pray, the heavens open. And when these dimensions happen, Christ is revealed to you. And when Christ is revealed, you become what you have seen. Because John saw the life. That was why they couldn't kill him. Church history told us they threw him into boiling oil. He couldn't die. They dragged him on the street. He couldn't even sustain injury. They didn't know how to kill him. Why? Because they kept seeing him. And the more he saw him, the more he became like him. And one of the dimensions John entered was the dimensions of life. Was the dimension that supersedes the powers of death. He said, I'm the one who was dead, but liveth forevermore. The moment John saw it, it became his inheritance and sonship. When you see him, you become like him. The second way to see him is by meditation on the word of God. Yesterday, I taught you on the word. In 2 Corinthians 3, 18, he said, we all with open faces, beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord. He said, we are changed into that very image from glory to glory. Please, don't, when you carry the Bible, the Bible is not about reading to go and preach. Every verse of scripture is a gateway into a dimension in Christ. In John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4, he said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. He said the same was with him in the beginning. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And he said the life was the light of man. Every scripture is a dimension in God. And when you enter that dimension, light appears to you. That light will cause you to see a dimension of Christ. And when you come out from that meditation, what you see is what you become. That's the law of the spirit. And so anyone who requires capacity enlargement must make prayer and meditation a lifestyle. Because if you cannot image Christ, you cannot bear the government of Christ. If you cannot image Christ, you cannot advance the government of God with Christ. Christ must flesh out through you. This is why Romans 13, 14 said, put on the Lord Jesus. Make no occasion for the flesh to fulfill the loss thereof. Every Christian must pay the price of beholding. You either behold by prayer or you behold by meditation. The second law of sonship is that you must be led by the Spirit of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 14, it says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sonship is not about gender. Some sisters here are more sons than men. <laughs> Sonship is not gender. It's the ability to image Christ. And it's also the ability to be led by the Spirit of God. As touching ordination, creativity is a disadvantage. We were not born to be creative as on matters of ordination. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordained you to be a prophet. Any act of creativity that deviates you from ordination has brought you into perpetual failure as far as the immortals are concerned. And so in addition to beholding Christ, you must pattern your life in such a way that you must hear God. When you hear him, you become invincible. When you hear him, you become powerful. This is why Jesus was talking to Satan. He came to tempt him. If you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. He said, no. You, sonship is not about turning stones to bread it's about living by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded sons are not those who turn stones to bread sons are not those who do miracles to create a point sons are those who are led they hear God and because they hear God they come into a precision that is beyond the realms of men when we say God is righteous what do you think it means when we say God is righteous, we are talking about a distinctive feature in glory that makes it impossible for God to err. We are talking about a distinctive feature in glory that makes God different from all creatures. That's what we are talking about. And when a man begins to hear God, that level of precision and distinction is imparted into his life. And that distinction is a power. 
ask the fathers they will tell you they never move until God speaks the reason you see all of this regal expression of, 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 of power all around the redemption camp is because there's a man that hears God I was told yesterday that the moment he returned from Israel he went straight to his prayer room and that he won't come out here today I said what? at that age at that age what, what power are you working with? What, what capacity? Meanwhile, there are 20, 22, 23, 25 year old here that can't fast for 24 hours. And a man in his 70s has touched the power that has made him to tame the flesh. In his 80s, forgive me, I'm uninformed. <laughs> Elohim Adonai. <laughs> Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai ah, Elohim. You want to build capacity? Your goal from today is that every morning I want to look more like Christ Listen, the capacity is not the prayer The capacity is not the scripture you know No is the transformation is the transfiguration that's where the capacity is there are people who are praying but they are thieves and they are like the pharisees they argue and boast about hours of prayer it is not the prayer that is the capacity where does your prayer take you to and what do you see when you pray that's why you censor your focus in the spirit because when you come out you are not a pharisee that brags with how long you have prayed now praying for long is important because it's in staying there for long that things happen. But the goal is not the time. The goal is the transformation. The goal is the transfiguration. That when you come out, they see God through you. The Bible said Moses ascended Mount Sinai. And he was there for 40 days and 40 nights. And he said in Exodus 34, verse 29 and 30, that when Moses came down, he said his face shone like the sun. Suddenly, transfiguration began to take place. So much so that men could not look at him. It was on the strength of that transfigurative power that governance was ex ex executed. And so anywhere Moses came to, Moses had the power to introduce the government of God. Until a point came, Moses became the law. And when Paul was talking, he said, when Moses is read, he had mingled with God. He had mingled with the world until you couldn't separate them anymore. That was why when Moses' time of sojourn was over, he, God needed to introduce a technology of killing him because the guy couldn't die. At 120, he said his sight was not abated. And when God wanted to kill him, he said, go to the mountains of Nebo. There, I will kill you. Because if you kill Moses in the presence of men, you have exposed something that is eternal. And even the dead body of Moses, demons were coming to fight for it. So, a man's dead body was more important than living men. The devil came to fight for the body of Moses. They needed to carry it to the museum of, 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 of the demonic realm. There was too much glory on the man. So he knew that even the dead body was not a waste. And you know what? God had to mobilize an archangel. An archangel that was the angel over Israel came to fight for the dead body of another man. What kind of dominion is that? And we saw why the angel came. Because that body was still needed on the mountain of transfiguration. When Jesus was praying, the Bible said Moses and Elijah showed up because those were the two men that carried their bodies to heaven. God knew they would need it again. Moses and Elijah, they came to the mountain of transfiguration and they were telling Jesus what he should do. What kind of dominion is that? It's transfiguration. Be all with upward faces. Beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord, we are changed from glory to glory as by the spirit of the living God and Jesus himself knew it in Matthew 17 verse 2 he said after eight days he took Peter James and John to the mountain and he said as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered his raiment began to glister and he said there appeared oh heaven can merge with earth that's where government come government is not that you have cars dominion is not that you have money Dominion is that you have power to reintroduce Eden. You have power to download heaven to earth. So that when men step into your ecosystem, they begin to interact with heavenly realities. Because that which was, is that which is to come. Because that realm is where we live from. And Jesus mastered it. He said, the son of man which is in heaven. While he was yet walking in Nazareth. He captured heaven. He lived heaven. 
he introduced heaven to men when a generation wants to exercise dominion through transfiguration we must ascend there and we must bring the realm back why do you think the fathers talk casually and things move because they are talking from heaven they suspend the laws of the cosmos a man can look at you and say by this time tomorrow what do you mean sir how about the laws of economics how about governmental policies it's not like he was prepared they ran to Elisha and said the situation is bad women are eating their children the, the king is helpless and he said go and tell the king by this time tomorrow a cup of barley will be sold for one shekel do you know what it means to change national economy what are you saying the prime minister said I know God I also know about the window of heaven but even if the window of heaven is open it is not possible and he told him I'm not talking about the opening of the window of heaven I'm downloading heaven to earth it's one thing for the window of heaven to open it's another thing for heaven to kiss the earth I'm downloading heaven to earth and he said because you have argued I talk to you now as a prince of Zion you will see it you will not partake of it we don't know what to hunger from that's why we waste our time on Facebook that's why we waste our time on Instagram when you know what to hunger for you will tell yourself I will not be the same and you will lock yourself away you will hide there in the presence he said they that dwell in the secret place of the most high abides under the shadow of the almighty he shall say of his God you are my refuge and my fortress my shield and my buckler he said my God in whom I shall trust I shall not be afraid of the pestilence that wasted in noonday of the destruction and he said a thousand shall fall by your side ten thousand by your right hand he shall not come near you how can he come near you when you are living from heaven he said only with thy eyes shall thou see and behold the recompense of the wicked why because you have made God even the most high and his dwelling place your tabernacle we need sons to emerge otherwise our number counts for nothing when the princes come they know how to enslave children for the heir so long as he's a child he's not different from a servant even though he's lord of all so the father places him under tutors and governors he needs to mature to sonship and the first law of sonship is to image god the second law of sonship is to hear the voice of god it will take you a long time in God's presence because God's voice is not loud it's distinct it's a still small voice it will take acquaintance and many acquaintances to pick him from the spectrum of many voices there are the voices of men they are the voices of systems they are voices of ideologies and philosophies they are voices of traditions and they are demonic voices in that spectrum of voices harassing your soul it is a stain with God that you censor them out and you can pick the voice of the monarch of heaven. And when he talks, he said, the voice of God is full of majesty. The voice of God is upon many waters. It divided the sea. It divided the flames of fire. It causes the hind to carve. It discovered the forest. When God speaks, nations quake. When he spoke about many waters, he's talking about the nations of the earth. So when a man catches the voice of God, he becomes an amplifier. So when he talks, it's no longer him talking. It's God talking through him. That's why I say when they hear you, they hear me. That's where sonship comes from. That's where governance comes from. That's where dominion comes from. And I can tell you, this is a quest of the fathers. And that's why they are powerful. He said, I write unto you children, because your sins have been forgiven you for his namesake. He said, I write unto you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. But when he came to fathers, he said, I write unto you because you have known him. That is from the beginning. A young man may be fighting to fill a stadium to show that he's making impact. A father will weep if he doesn't see God in one week. So when they talk, their voices are lost. That's why we call them patriarchs. We call them patriarchs for two reasons. Number one, they journey with God until they find dimensions in God and they introduce those dimensions to men as ways he said Enoch walked with God and was not 
it was from the life of Enoch that we knew it is possible for a man to walk with a spirit so he showed us that dimension he said Noah when he was warned of God he moved with fear and he said on the strength of that God called him righteous so it was from the life of Noah that we knew that one of the things that appears a spirit is reverence so when we teach reverence today is the way of Noah Abel gave a more excellent sacrifice than Cain on the strength of that even while he was there he said his speak his blood spake in the courts of heaven so it was in the best life that we know that when you want to move a spirit give a sacrifice so when we call them patriarchs and fathers it's not a title it's because they have pioneered ways in god and those ways have become insurance systems for us who are children and the reason we call them fathers and patriarchs is also because anything you catch you can impart it so they constore dimensions a father can look at you and say, I bless you with the dew of heaven. He has no regard for inflation and deflation. When he talks, it must happen. I bless you with corn and wine. He can impart dimensions. He can constore possibilities because he's a custodian. And so a generation must leave the distraction and press into God. But it all begins by hearing the voice of God. The third thing that makes you a son, please sit down. Ha. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah. 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 God will descend here this morning. Mm. Some of you, your hearts are already burning. He said, when he spoke to us, did our hearts not burn? Because you are about to be brought into government. You have dwelt among children for too long. And the Lord says to tell you, he said, that your time is now. You don't have to be 50 to be a son. At the age of 17, David brought down Goliath. You are all too old. The time is now. And as I speak now, there is a flame of fire that is being kindled. And there are 14 of you that will come under that hand, that fire of the Spirit. And so I speak by the Spirit of God. Everyone here that is being introduced into the corridors of sonship, the place where government dwells, the place where the hand of God moves man. The place where the spirit ordains man. Let the hand of God descend upon them. Take that fire now. If I have a shazir, help me. A procession is about to begin. Let the flames of heaven rest upon you. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
of governance some of you will be ordained to take the power of God to the marketplace and some of you will be ordained to serve God as priests on the altar in the fivefold ministry hear me there's an apostolic grace coming upon some of you this morning I came as a messenger to find them that are ordained of God for a time such as this and so wherever you are standing, the road of the apostolic, the power for governance, the grace for leadership, the authority to shift nations, the authority to open seasons, standing on this tall altar, under the grace of our Father, I decree now, let that red mantle rest upon you. Let that grace rest upon you. Let that grace rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Ushers, you can help those under the power, put them on the eye. So people will not fall on them. Something brutal is about to hit here. He said, at a certain time, the angel of the Lord went down and troubled the waters. And he said, him that steps in first is cleansed. There is a touch that comes from people who step into the waters. I decree by the Spirit now, as that man to rest upon you, let that grace take over your life. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ushers, please help them. The wind of the Spirit is moving. 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 Help them, help them. I will lay hands on some of them. Help them now. I sense a movement in the spirit. I sense a movement. Makarato, Ferakata, Zeina, Barina, Hadak, Zavira Kone, Maragira, Panondro, Frakta, Silagata. Help them, help them, help them. This is the hour of ordination. You can bring them to the front here. Usher, save them. I will return here. 
in two minutes the holy ghost is pressing on me to complete the message hey mamro havakateria davak maradia vorakibo sabandere kedak the third thing that makes for a son is to endure the chastening of the lord hebrews chapter 12 verse 6 to verse 10 the bible said concerning sons not everybody if you are a son the bible gave us an outline it said for everyone that is a son endures the chastening of the lord he said except we are bastards if we say we are sons he said we must endure the chastisement of the lord he said for he who the father loveth he chastises he said even our earthly parents we obey them in reverence when they chastise us he said are we not going to rather submit to the chastening of the father of spirits that we may live even christ the bible said he learned obedience through the things he suffered our christianity today exonerates hardship exonerates trials exonerates tribulation in second timothy chapter 1 verse 8 paul said be not ashamed of my bonds nor the afflictions of the gospel see if you have not known the chastening of the lord you can't do much for god if you think christianity it's all about coming to God every day. Bless me, bless me. And his car, house, and all your testimonies begin and end with what God gave you. You don't know sonship. You cannot exercise government. In Acts 15, 26, he said, Paul and Barnabas, he said, be this be the men that hazarded, hazarded, hazarded their lives for the gospel. A generation must rise like Esther, and say if it is God if I perish I perish why do you think we have compromise everywhere because we are not taught the place of endurance you see as a good soldier of Christ you say endure hardship Paul said I beat my body I bring it under subjection so that when I finish running I will not be a castaway there is a place of the scourgings of the spirit there is a place of the chastening of the Lord. There is a place of trials and tribulation. If you don't go far with God, you will never know it. And so sons have scars. They are bad in the spirit are the scars they possess for Jesus. They can tell you. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 8, he said concerning the suffering we suffered in Asia, I will not keep it from you. He said we were in affliction until we despaired even of life. He said the verdict of death was upon us. He said but in it we learn to trust God. So there are things that you will only learn when you endure the sufferings of God. Peter was speaking in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 1. He said him that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sinning. The reason most of us are controlled by our emotions and impulses is because we have not asked God I will go any length with you. I will not stop only where you bless. I will stop when men carry the reproach of God. That's why I say blessed are they that men revile for the sake of righteousness. He say great is their reward in heaven. It's for sons. And finally, a son is one who is given. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Unto us a child is born. He say but unto us a son is given. He say the government of this world shall be upon his shoulder when you are not giving you can't know government so a point comes when god can trust you and he tells you give me all the money in your account there's a point where god can trust you he say rise up go to sokoto and represent me it may not be convenient but now you know you are a son and the revelation is that your spirit and your body belongs to him you were bought with a price you are no longer your own 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20. So whatever your master decides, that's what you do. It is at that level of being given that you come into the revelation of Jesus the Lord. Because on the altar of salvation, you met Jesus the Savior. But in the field of mission and service, you will meet Jesus the Lord. Where you no longer have the right to make a choice. 
because Jesus himself demonstrated it in the in the garden of Gethsemane he said father if it were possible let this cup pass me by he said yet not my will but thine when you know Jesus the Lord the sacrifice you make is to submit your will so when we talk about capacity building for kingdom number one we are talking about the price of prayer and the word that brings you to the place of beholding him number two we are talking about the price of waiting in the presence until you can discern his voice number three we are talking about the endurance of the chastening of the lord because you know outside god you have no life and number four we are talking about submitting your will because you have seen the lordship of christ when you get there you are ready for kingdom can you lift your hands toward heaven if we can let's be silent there's a fire about to descend here because God wants to activate ordinations. Some of you came here, you didn't know you'll be recruited. Trust me, when you go back, you will never be the same again. These words you have heard, they will travel with you. And the angel that guards over my utterance, they will go with you. For some of you, it will afflict you with fasting, for some with prayer until you come to that point like moses you will go to horeb the mountain of god where you will encounter the bush burning that's not consumed that's where god will dictate to you the utterances of your ordination and then you will know that before you were formed in your mother's womb he knew you and he ordained you for a purpose can you lift your hands this morning we have had too many altar calls so i'm not making anyone now but all you want to say is lord i surrender because now is recruitment for kingdom. descend here and when I speak of ordination this morning I'm not talking about fivefold ministry I'm not saying you live here you are a prophet or you are evangelist or apostle that's not what I'm saying but you'll be separated for service if you can just be silent and lift your hand as that fire descend I will come down and lay hands on some of you to separate you for service something will change in your life forever father you said you will baptize them with fire and you will set them apart this morning you have brought us to that point of absolute surrender so let the flames of your spirit descend here holy spirit ushers you will help me now this thing will happen for just three minutes as the lord touches them bring them here quick I want to lay hands on some of them as fast as possible as I drop the mic. Holy Spirit, from the left to the right, from the front to the back, to those watching online, let the fire fall now. Take in the name of Jesus. <laughs> 